Less than 15 seasons ago, Scunthorpe United were playing in the Skybet Championship, English football's second tier. Now the club finds itself in the National League North, English football's sixth tier after suffering multiple relegations. Today we fix that by taking charge at Scunthorpe for the next 10 seasons to see what we can do with this club. Right, so this is Scunthorpe United. We are in the Vanarama National League North. As you can see, everything on your screen right now, you can see the facilities in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can see the stadium, you can see our lovely kits, and you can see the fact that we are in the Vanarama National League North. Now, if we go into the club's history on their overview, you can see the seasons in the championship. They have one season there where they got relegated um, and then they got promoted the following season back into the championship in 20, uh, 2009. 2010 and then they got relegated in 2010 2011 and then it's been a pretty downhill time ever since um and now the club finds itself at a new low basically the vanarama national league north the club isn't in the best state i feel like glanford park could be a very good fortress for us not a lot of teams are going to like to come here into the future but we are going to be playing in the vanarama national league north one thing i do want to draw your attention to we are currently a professional team yes we are a professional team in the sixth tier of english football which is absolutely nuts um if we go and take a look at a few things in terms of the squad i've sorted the squad here by the best ability um and i do have to say shout out to cal roberts who is our best player he looks pretty good for the level but he is injured and expected to be out for four to six months we're using a real world database here and he is unavailable for us at the start of this season as is this man Jason Law he is the second best player in this team uh, and he is also injured for a, a large portion of the season he will be out for four to five months uh, with a torn thigh muscle which sounds pretty darn painful so we're gonna have to rely on some of these other guys uh, to get the job done but as I said we are using a free uh, a free transfer no we are using a real world update so you can see lots of the players that we do have leaving the club um, some of the younger uh, uh, younger sort of more talented players are, are departing the club but we will have these three guys coming in uh is during the course of pre-season effectively just so that we can get ready for the season now competitions wise obviously we are in the sixth tier of english football uh, so we are in the vanarama national north we will play in the emirates fa cup but we will have to qualify for that we enter in the second qualifying round stage for that and we are in the fa trophy as well no carabao cups and stuff like that for us to worry about just yet the border expecting us to get uh get promoted at the first time of asking as you can see here gain automatic promotion to the national league and you can kind of see why because if we go on the national league north and we go on the season preview we are one to four on to get ourselves promoted so you would need to put four pounds or four euros or four dollars or four of whatever currency you would use to bet on scunthorpe you would need to put four of them on to win one so we are heavy favorites to get the job done some interesting teams in here Glo the fact that gloucester being a boy from bristol the fact that gloucester are in the vanarama national league north is absolutely disgusting but let's get into the season and see what we can do in season one with scunthorpe united are you tired of the same old energy drinks well you need to meet sneak where normal is boring and different is better. Sneak is a sugar-free and junk-free alternative to help fuel your focus and concentration without that crash. Each serving has 150 milligrams of caffeine and is available in 15 unique flavors, all for less than one pound per serving. And if you're ready to ditch the ordinary, click on the link in the description. That will take you to the Sneak website. Using my link, you will get yourself 10% off of every order that you do on Sneak. It's not just a one-time thing. Every single order you do, you will save yourself 10% using that link in the description so go and check them out anyway let's get into the results of season one kicking off the season one review we are talking about the league as we started the campaign with a defeat on the road but then managed to right the ship immediately asserting our dominance on most teams as you'd expect from looking at our fixture list we won the league at a canter topping the table with 104 points beating chester to the title by a massive 15 points Danny Elliott was our key man this season, winning the league golden boot with 36 goals, 11 more than the guy who came in second from Tamworth. 
In the domestic cups, we actually made the FA Cup first round proper by dispatching Wokington, Telford United and Boston United in the qualifying round. However, in the first round, we came up against League One Reading and the golfing quality was very apparent as Reading strolled to a 4-1 win, which felt a little bit harsh on us. In the FA Trophy, however, we were fantastic as we surprisingly made it all the way to the final. Looking at the fixtures, our run to the final was pretty straightforward, even beating National League sides Eastleigh, Aldershot and Southend en route. It would be Rochdale in the final and it would be the National League side that took the lead as Devontae Rodney put them into a commanding position with just 20 minutes to go. But then Andrew Boyce was on hand to fire home from a second phase of a corner to send the game to extra time. An extra 30 minutes couldn't separate us so the game went to penalties where our goalkeeper Ross Fitzsimmons came up clutch saving two of the Rochdale penalties to see us win the shootout 4-2. This season we set the standard with a league and cup double as we will return to the National League for next season. As we're a long way down the English pyramid, the money won't be outstanding just yet, but our wage budget has doubled, so it's time to raid those free summer signings. So guys, we are back for season number two, and this is our transfer update going into the National League season. On your screen, you can see that four players have left the club, two on free transfers and two on loan deals as well. But our main goal this summer was to raid the Premier League clubs or higher up clubs for the players that were leaving on free transfers. Setting up your scouting to look for these end of contract players can be so damn valuable at this period in time. On your screen, you will be able to see some of the players that we have pulled in. We've pulled in three players from Arsenal, two guys from Liverpool, and because it's split over a couple pages, we've got one from Villa, one from Leicester, and two more on free transfers. I'm going to go through them now just so that you guys can get accustomed to some of these guys, but we do have Kobe Small, who is the first guy who comes in from Arsenal. As you can see, for this level, I think he's going to be very, very good. High determination as well as really good positioning is quite key for a centre-back at this level. If they are stood in the right place and they want to be there, it's really does help with determination uh, you can see that he can turn into a good player he is only 17 years of age uh, and he is on three thousand pounds a week but we did sign him for free remember and his value is now up up at about two hundred thousand pounds if someone did want to buy him so you can kind of see what we're trying to do here get these players in from these big clubs on free transfers give them game time and then hopefully turn a profit for them so that is kobe small and we've got ford here as another one who comes in from arsenal to play on that right hand side you can see he is wanted already he's wanted by Torquay United on loan, but he's probably going to be staying with us. Then we've got uh, Carol Figueroa who comes in. He is one of the guys from Liverpool. 17 acceleration, 16 pace on him to play up front. It's a nice dynamic option for us to have. He's not the best striker that we've signed this summer, but I'll get to him in a second. Then we have Noah Cooper, another one from uh, Arsenal, a goalkeeper for us this time. High determination. I'd like the positioning to be a little bit better, but not too bad in terms of his reflexes, his one-on-ones and his handling. They're the three core attributes I look for in a goalkeeper so he is pretty good there Jaden Dans is the final one then from Liverpool advance forward another striker who as I did mention we've got a couple of different options for us this season he is wanted on loan by Spennymore but we'll have to see how some of these guys pan out I think at this level you need to throw a lot at the wall and hope that some of it sticks uh, and we will hope that some of it sticks we then picked up Teddy Rowe from Aston Villa as you can see here a nice creative player 13 pass in 13 first touch 13 technique he is very good especially at this level very very creative and he's on an absolute steal at 300 pounds a week as well now i did mention the main man that we have signed is this guy amani richards he looks fantastic i can't believe that we were able to get him at this level 13 dribbling finishing 11 first touch 11 technique as well good off the ball uh, and then very good physical qualities because i think that's kind of what you need at this national league level if your team's bigger and quicker and faster than everyone you're probably going to do all right. So he looks very good, and I'm very happy to have him at the club. We also got Josh Davidson here, a fullback who comes in again from Liverpool, can play in defence midfield as well as right wing back as well. So a very, very good option, uh, even though we won't be uh, messing around with our tactic too, too much. Uh, and then we do have Tyler Edmondson here, another one who's come in. He was at Southampton. Uh, again, another good option. So you can see this is the tactic that we are running. It is GYR's Swans alone a tactic. It is a 4-2-3-1. It does look very good. And if we quick pick without 
height restriction the best 11 you can kind of see how we are set up right now now i do have to touch on this front four uh because they are incredibly good obviously roberts and law are back for the first like season they are back fully fit ready to start the campaign so i'm hoping we can hit the ground running with these guys because cal roberts is still the best player in our team he did do very well once he come back from his injury last season 11 goals and 10 assists in 16 games averaged a 7.89 in the national league north goes to show he shouldn't really be there and then if we look at law as well he got 11 goals and six assists averaged over a seven as well so hopefully these guys are there and capable to make the step up to the national league if we flick over to the competitions tab you can see we are back in the national league of course uh, and we do have the fa cup and the fa trophy which we will be trying to defend uh, obviously the further we get in the fa cup the more money that comes in which is always a plus for us because uh we're 500k in the red right now so we're gonna have to see how season two gets on but let's get into things this season in the domestic cup competitions we were terrible our defense of the FA Trophy ended in the third round as we lost 2-1 on the road to Gateshead. And in the FA Cup, we didn't make it out of the qualifiers as we lost at home to National League Northside Alfreton in a replay with several of our players having stinkers. However, the lack of league fixtures here really allowed us to focus on our league campaign. Our return to the National League was much more successful than I was expecting, picking up several victories both at home and on the road. Our form was actually so impressive that we made it into the playoffs after finishing 10 points behind champions Bromley. In the playoff semi-finals, we took on 5th place Hartlepool at Glanford Park, and this was pretty routine, with Romari Ford scoring the pick of the bunch as the team marched to Wembley with a 3-0 victory. It was Oldham Athletic in our way at Wembley, and Danny Elliott opened the scoring in the first half, but Oldham were able to pull a goal back through Luke Molyneux. With the game in the balance, former Aston Villa man and summer signing Teddy Rowe scored an absolute banger to see us return to the Football League at the first time of asking. This is how the table looked at the end of the season and it was a remarkable campaign for us as well as Amani Richards who won the Golden Boot with 31 goals in the league. Despite back-to-back -back promotions, the club are still in the red financially. So no transfer budget yet again, but there has been a considerable increase to our wage budget, so time to look at those end-of-year contract signings yet again. So starting as always, we have our transfer update, and you can see we've kind of gone down the same route again. We have, however, sold Jaden Dans for 300k. This is a player that we signed on a free last summer, signed him for free. He didn't actually play in abundance for us, only got 10 league appearances, but we've sold him to Stoke City for 300k which at this level is absolutely huge you can see again we've been busy in the transfer market signing players from elsewhere we've got a player from United we've got a player from Hull we've got a player from City uh, and we also picked up this guy as well Nick Tanzev who is going to be our new goalkeeper former AFC Wimbledon man one cap for New Zealand this man so I think he could be a very good step up in that particular area Reese Bennett is a player who came in from Manchester United he again looks pretty good 21 years of age for him uh, and a definite improvement in that position Harry Wood came in as a midfielder who uh, comes in from Hull City. He looks like a very good option, again, uh, on the younger end. But I think that's kind of going to be our main stay this season is get the younger kids in and hopefully we can kind of uh, have them have them there and I've just noticed in the bottom right hand corner he's a former Scunthorpe man he's been here on loan when we were in league two last time we're back in league two again and he's come back for a little bit more so uh, it's good to see him come back and Jamal Baptiste is the guy signed from Manchester City we are really tried to focus on the defense this time around because I think we're going to need it to make the step up um, obviously former Manchester City man former West Ham man as well came in on a free transfer obviously hasn't played for any of those guys and then the last one is Jordan Marshall. He comes in from TNS. He is a very, very dynamic left back for this level. Uh, and I think he can go on to do very, very good things. If we go and take a look at our best 11 for the season, if we quick pick without restriction, this is how we are set up for the season. Obviously, you can see Bennett, Baptiste, Marshall and Tanzev getting into the team. Uh, so basically we've rejuvenated the defense this time around obviously we still have roberts and law the original injury prone players uh but they are still hanging on uh in this team they've not been replaced just yet we do have richards of course who is growing up front he is looking much much better after a very good first season with us last time uh valued at 80k to 325k uh maybe if someone comes in we may be forced to sell him but i want to keep hold of him as much as we possibly 
can. We are, of course, back into the Football League, uh, which does mean more competitions on our uh, on our plate this season. We do have the EFL Trophy. We've got the Carabao Cup as well. Uh, so these are the two ones that come in, but I'm not expecting great things in either of them. Obviously, the FA Cup, we are in at the first round this time. No need to qualify, which is good because we didn't last season. And in Sky Bet League 2, there's lots of good names in here. If we go and take a look at the season preview, though, we are predicted to finish in 22nd. Obviously, we've returned to the division for the first time in a while. But Bromley, who finished top of the league last season, are actually predicted to finish in fourth. So this is going to be an interesting one. Some of the relegated teams are in and around us. Sutton are down there. Gillingham, Cheltenham as well. It's going to be an uphill task this season, I think. Uh, but I, th I think the boys are ready for it. Before we get into the results of season number three, I have some transfers to update you on that we managed to do before the window slammed shut. Before the summer window closed, we managed to pick up Amadou Diallo on a free transfer after leaving Newcastle, along with former Chelsea midfielder Lewis Baker to bolster those options. And then in January, we secured Premier League Wolves as our new senior affiliate, so we raided them for loan signings, along with another four coming in from elsewhere. However, these additions didn't help us in the cup competitions because we were disappointing yet again. In the EFL Trophy, we progressed through the northern section Group B with ease before being dispatched by Tranmere in the second round. Things weren't much better in the Carabao Cup as we got bounced in the first round, losing at home to championship side Blackpool. And completing the trifecta of shocking cup performances, we renewed our FA Cup rivalry with Reading, who for the second time in three seasons knocked us out in the first round with a 4-1 win. But with all of those competitions out of the way and actually not cluttering up our fixture list, we were able to focus solely on the league yet again, and it definitely, definitely paid off. We had a better start to Football League life than everyone was expecting, but it was our form in 2026 that really pushed us up the table. Since the turn of the year, we won 15 of the 20 league matches that we played to see us finish the season top of Skybet League 2 and get the club promoted back to League 1 at the first time of asking. The rise of this club from the National League North has been pretty quick and the turnover of players is going to be a crucial factor over the summer as we move out the conference standard players and replace them with true Football League talent. We are still almost a million pounds in the red, so naturally there is zero transfer budget, but we have seen our wage budget increase about £25,000 a week. So at this level, that can be several good players. So this summer saw our biggest overhaul of the squad. Basically, now you will be able to see the nine players that we did release yes nine lots of them gone players that we've signed players that's, that were here already we've had to move on from a lot of them Jason Law is probably one of the biggest casualties obviously he was injured right at the start had a good couple of years with us not really at the level of Skybet League 2 I wouldn't have said so I'm not sure if he would have been able to make the jump up uh, also Teddy Rowe who scored a very good goal for us also probably not at that level anymore despite having a good couple of years with us but we have been able to be active in the transfer market as you would expect lots of players coming in uh we do need to go back um no we don't sorry we do need to stay here this is where all of our signings have come in um we got lots of very impressive levels of players coming in um i'm gonna butcher this name connor shawlessy is how i'm gonna say this guy's name former portsmouth player looks like an incredibly well-rounded player 30 years of age don't be afraid of signing older players guys it really does help especially mentally team leaders all of that good stuff signing old players is not a bad thing you don't want a squad of children uh as as they i think was it, was it Alan Hansen? You'll never win anything with kids. It's true in FM as well. So he comes in, can be a very good leader for us. Max Merrick comes in. He's a goalkeeper, formerly of Chelsea. Uh, looks like a very good step up in this area because he can actually stand in the right position, which is nice. Uh, you love to see it. Laddick comes in from uh, Ipswich Town. He is young though, uh, so he will stay in our under-18s. But sometimes you sign these players because... You know, if we can sell him for 50k in a couple years, coming in on a free, definitely worth it. Dan Casey comes in from Boreham Wood again, much the same with him. Uh, some of these players coming in on free transfers, you pick him up. He's former Arsenal, so he might have some name, uh, some weight to that name, so you never know if we are able to do something with him. Josh Essen is another one who comes in, former Wolves player, obviously. We do have that Wolves connection. Joe Haig, hey, I've definitely butchered it. Regardless, former Chelsea player, another one who can play on the wing, a little bit active if we need him to be. Uh, Thomas Galvez comes in on loan from Middlesbrough. He is a Finnish youth international. That is Finland, isn't it? He is Finnish, but he's not finished. If you know the joke, you know the joke. He's finished, isn't he? He's not finished. 
Uh, he looks very good on loan from Middlesbrough for the season, which we are absolutely more than happy to have. We've got this guy, Ethan Beerley, is definitely how I've butchered his name, but you can kind of see he is a bit of a step up from Teddy Rowe, who we did like leave. So, um, again, looks like we're going to constantly need to keep progressing these. We signed Alex Ferguson, not Sir Alex. We've just signed Alex Ferguson. He's in on loan from St. Johnson for the season. And then finally, we've got this guy, Harvey Lintot, who comes in as a fullback option for us. Uh, he is a former Northampton town lad so obviously we've had lots of turnover with the squad so it's probably going to start the season pretty poorly and i will say finding this roaming playmaker is very difficult at this level but ultimately don't worry about the star ratings because this guy can definitely be a good roaming playmaker even if he's only got one star just make sure he's training the position guys uh which i will just make sure we're doing how as you can see he's training roaming playmaker so he will get better in that position Come the end of the season with more game time. The team's pretty balanced, actually. Shaughnessy comes in and actually really does make us better at the back. But obviously, we've got Diallo and Richards. These are going to be our main guys going forward. He's still listed at a four and a half star potential player is Richards. He's doing very well. He's managed to make the step up every level that we've had so far. Very good season in the National League. Struggled a little bit more last season, only 15 goals. But I'm thinking he can still play at this level. We just need to kind of service him just that little bit better. Competitions wise, obviously we are climbing up the leagues. We are in Skybet League One. So we still have the EFL trophy, uh, but we do have the Carabao Cup. And this time we'll take on Cruz. So someone will actually not in the championship, which will be quite nice. And uh, maybe one day we'll win one of these. Who knows? Probably not, but maybe. Um, I'm ultimately thinking we can do pretty well in Skybet League One. The board are expecting us to fight relegation as they are every single year. And you can see why. The odds are not stacked with us. Ourselves and Bromley did get promoted last year. Uh, back to back promotions for both of us, which is really cool to see. Um, but we are, neither of us are actually favoured to do well in this division. So we're going to have to see. P uh, Preston, Portsmouth and Sheffield Wednesday are all in this division as well. We've also got the likes of Wrexham, Salford, uh, Bolton are still here. Uh, so some big, big teams at this level. Uh, so I think promotion is probably a little bit beyond us this season. But who knows? Maybe the guys can galvanise together and maybe we could get another promotion in a row. So I have to jump in and let you know here that this is the most remarkable season that I have ever seen for a team at League One level. Our worst performance of the season was in the Carabao Cup as we knocked out Crew on the road in the first round before being dispatched by Premier League Everton in the second round on penalties with Cal Roberts and Harry Woods seeing their penalties saved. In the EFL Trophy, we made it through Group H and progressed to the knockout portion of the competition, beating Notts County and Morecambe before facing AFC Wimbledon in the quarterfinals. This proved to be a step too far for us, however, as Wimbledon secured a 2-1 victory at home to move into the semi-finals. But this wasn't the only quarterfinal that we would make this season because somehow we made the quarterfinals of the FA Cup from League One. We progressed through the first two rounds, beating lower league opposition in the likes of Altrincham and Sutton United. In the third round, with all the big boys in, we were drawn at home against Blackpool. The championship side capitalised on a defensive mix-up to take the lead, but the boys battled back and secured the win with goals from Diallo and Roberts. We were then drawn at home in the next round as we faced Derby County, and we really came to play, this time dismantling the championship side, winning the game 7-3 to progress into the fifth round. This is where we faced our first Premier League opposition as we entertained Bournemouth at Glanford Park and they couldn't get near us in the first half as we opened up a 3-0 lead early on. They did pull a goal back from a nice free kick from Rankin Costello but it was too little too late and we moved into the quarterfinals where we were faced Nottingham Forest but this time we'd be on the road. The Premier League side took charge of this one in the first half with goals from Sanagre, Hudson-Odoi and Danilo to firmly put them in the driver's seat. We did add a goal in the second half as Armani Richards tapped home from a Josh Davidson cross, but this is where we exited the competition. However, the prize money and attendance revenue for getting this far in the FA Cup is massive for any football league club. And finally, in Skybet League One, we turned Glanford Park into a fortress right from the get-go, only losing there three times all season. On the road, we did suffer a few defeats, but this was by far and away better than everyone would have expected from us in our first season back in League One. 
Last time Scunthorpe got promoted from League One, they won the playoffs in 2009, but this season was more like their 2006-2007 campaign as they were crowned champions with a low points return of 87 points. But ultimately, I don't care because we will be playing championship football next season. Thanks to the FA Cup run along with promotion, we are now back in the black in terms of the club's finances, but we still don't have a transfer budget. However, our wage budget has doubled and we've managed to clear the £1 million worth of debt that the club did have. So again, we've been looking for these higher profile players who have been released by their clubs or are set to be released by their clubs, and we've actually managed to turn a profit on some players yet again. You can see we've got 450k of players transfer sales, uh, first of which is this guy Ethan Beerley. He has gone obviously that he wasn't with us for long he didn't actually play for us at all but we sold him for 160k he was unhappy with the lack of game time as you kind of would expect so we offered him out and Burton Albion took him so you cannot argue with that whereas someone who did play for us last season is Connor Shaughnessy he was wanted by Chesterfield uh, and as he was turning 31 we did decide to move him on for 300k a good profit on a player but he was a good servant for us last season so he will be missed as you can see though we've kind of upgraded our uh, affiliate game uh, we, we are now affiliated with Arsenal yeah it's gone quite well here if we go on to our affiliate clubs you can see that we've replaced Wolves with Arsenal and we've been able to use some of their players um obviously Arsenal bigger club than Wolves no offense Wolves fans but uh yeah we've been uh we've been there and we've kind of raided them as much as we possibly can now I do need to talk to you about this guy who we actually did spend some money on but he looks very very good George Galino he looks very good comes in from Paraguay three under 20s appearances for his national side uh looks pretty good not necessarily fast but he is six foot three good 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 first touch good first touch for a big man uh nice and brave as well so hopefully he can be a thorn in the side and ultimately this is kind of what you've got to do with these levels of players is find these gems find those wonder kids before the other big teams do so um, I'll just run through some of the others as well. George Earthy comes in. He looks like a creative midfielder, can play in two key positions for us. Again, a former player at, with us. He was on loan uh, from West Ham, then went on loan to Bromley. They got promoted as well. So I know he's ready for this level. Uh, so he will be here as well. Barcelona Athletic signed us. Uh, we got this guy, Ander Astralaga. Is how I'm going to butcher that guy's name. He came in on a free. Another one from Bayern Munich as well. You can't be afraid to go and find these guys who are going to be leaving their club and obviously where we are now championship level we, we've got a little bit of clout he's valued at 1.5 to 2.4 million pounds we got him for absolutely nada um then you can start to see some of the other guys that we've signed guga is another one who comes in relatively well-rounded he's going to be a squad player we're not going to go overboard with him and then adam cook is another one who we've spent some money on only a touch only a little bit he come in for 56k uh but looks like a very well-rounded player for this level and hopefully he could be worth a lot in the future valued at 1.6 to 5 million pounds now He's a promising fullback, so hopefully he does go on to do good things. Then we've signed players from Arsenal. Andrew Bevan's one of them. Uh, Will Sweet is another one. That's this guy right here. He's another good centre-back option for us. And Jason Joseph, who's one of their new gens. He's also from Barbados, I believe that is. How good is my flag knowledge? Yes, he is from Barbados. Model Citizen as well, so another good one to have. Also, physical specimen, so hopefully he could cause some damage. We've got Mark Brooks from Toronto. You can start to see the new gens that we are trying to bring in now i've been using my wonder kid finder this is it. It, it it pulls in these types of players i'll leave a link to it down in the description so you can go and find players like this for cheap as well obviously mark brooks coming in on a loan deal uh, but looking like a very good prospect nonetheless gabriel ardizoni is another one who's coming on loan he's coming on loan from sao paulo he's obviously not going to play over in brazil but he will definitely play for me he can play on the left hand side as a very good fullback option i'd like him to have a touch better cross in but we cannot be too picky with what we are kind of picking up right now. Mikhail Matt is another one who comes in, another young player. You can kind of see what we are doing here on that left back spot, but I don't see him getting past Ardazoni. Johannesson is another one, Norwegian this time, um, raiding some of these other clubs that you know you don't normally sign players from i don't really go to north strand in norway uh but this guy appears on the filter so you sign him up and then the last one is this guy another one who goes into the under 18s you might sell him some of these players we've been signing not even been playing for the club but you can still shift them like we did with ethan Bailey for a little bit of money obviously we go into the competitions tab and you can see we are in the carabao cup now which is 
this is uh, this is going to be tough because we've dropped the EFL trophy, but we are in the championship. So look, I just want to stay in the division. Fight bravely against the relegation is what the board are expecting. That's kind of what I want to do as well. If we stay in the division, you can see that Wolves, Southampton and Sunderland are down here, along with Sheffield United who have been previously relegated. But you've got absolutely huge clubs at this level. And all three promoted teams ourselves, Millwall and Rotherham, are all 150 to 1 to win the league and are all predicted to get relegated. So it's going to be a very tough one. I could see Wolves doing a job here. I could see them going straight back up. Same with Southampton, to be honest. Burnley, Sheffield United, Watford, West Brom. You never know who's going to actually get their act together in this year's game. So it's going to be a very interesting season number five in the championship. Yes, we're in the championship. Kicking off Season 5's review, we have the Carabao Cup, where we actually made our deepest run in the competition that we have done so far. We advanced through the early rounds with wins against Carlisle and Blackpool before beating Premier League Fulham on penalties. In the fourth round, it was Premier League opposition at Glanford Park again, as we managed to beat Aston Villa 4-2. So we advanced into the quarterfinals where we faced Chelsea at Stamford Bridge and we were taught a little bit of a lesson, getting thumped 4-0 to exit the competition. It was a similar story in the FA Cup as we progressed through the earlier rounds dispatching Blackpool again, Burnley via a replay and then Ipswich Town before being drawn away to our senior affiliate Arsenal. I'd have fancied our chances if we were at home, but at the Emirates, Arsenal were in full control of the game, with Bukayo Saka scoring twice in a 4-2 win. So with us out of both cup competitions and nothing else on the schedule, let's talk about how we did in the championship. As you'd expect, we faced a rough welcome to the division, suffering three defeats in our opening five games, but the team did adjust to the level and started stacking up the points. Having been with us since the National League season, Amani Richards continues to find the back of the net and was our top goalscorer for us in the league with 19 goals. But I think, sadly, this is the end of the line for him as he does want to explore his options at the end of the season. Throughout winter, we were incredibly strong yet again, going on a 16-game unbeaten run that went from December all the way through to the end of February, which really propelled us up the table. We had a wobble in March, but finished the season strong and somehow managed to achieve second in the championship table, pipping Southampton to the automatic promotion spot on goal difference. So we've achieved five promotions in a row, climbing the English pyramid quicker than any club has in real world football and we're going to be playing in the Premier League next season. That does mean that we have some Premier League money coming in as we have a transfer budget of just under £29 million and our wage budget has quadrupled to £400,000 a week. So guys, this is going into the transfer update for season number six. It's our first time actually having some real money in this save. And we've been able to turn over a little bit as well. You can see on the right hand side, lots of players actually leaving us on loan fees. We've not actually sold too, too many players. We just sold Figueroa, who has gone over to El Paso. Um, he didn't really play too, too much for us uh, last season. Only the three appearances, but he has now gone to El Paso for 145k. But we've been able to use some of that money and we've tried to be shrewd with it. Uh, and going out there and using that Wonder Kid Finder to find some of these gems. Now, Luis Carlos Correa is one of them. He comes in as another nice option for us. We cannot get him a work permit right now, uh, which is really annoying. We can apply for another one soon, but he is making youth level appearances for Colombia. But annoyingly, we cannot get him a full-time work permit yet, so we may have to find a loan for him, but he does look very good. We also signed Thierry Henry. Yes, not that one. It's another one. Uh, he's gone out on loan to Scunthorpe. He's Brazilian. He's Thierry Henry. We had to sign him, didn't we? Uh, we'll see if he turns into anything, but it was worth a pump for a little bit. And now you can see some of the fees that we've started to spend on some players. This one did come in for free He's back in the under 18s, but sometimes you do need to sign these players. But we did get Philip Dobner. He comes in from Bochum in Germany. Looks like a great option. I'm probably going to try and play him at centre back. I feel he's more of a centre half, especially at six foot three, than a full back. So we're probably going to try and transition him into playing at centre back. Robin Hernandez looks like a very good player for us. He is very creative, very tricky. We do need to work on his finishing if he is going to play in that advanced midfield position. Um, but looks like a very good prospect. He's now valued at 19 million to 22 million pounds. We paid one for him. Again, guys, if you're not using my Wonder Kid Finder, you, you really should be. Um, Nicolas Olmos is another one who comes in. Looks like a great striker for us. This guy coming in from Argentina. I'd like him to have a little bit more in terms of work rate. But looks like a very good player. 
Nonetheless, uh, hopefully he can go on to do good things for us. Roy Soto is another one. This guy coming in from Costa Rica. Fully fledged Costa Rican international. Again, looks very good. High positioning, high tackling, very good natural fitness as well. Uh, he is now valued at 31 to 44 million pounds. And we paid 850k for him. Honestly, the work that you can do with this filter, when you get to this level and the scouting can be very good, is, is, is unreal. Uh, Lucas Makedo is another one who comes in. Uh, Again, he will go into the, the, the squad, but probably won't play a, a huge amount. Franco Souza, another one, a good central midfielder, a nice well-rounded player. Again, struggling to get a work permit for him, especially with the fact that he's not actually playing for Argentina. We cannot apply for a work permit for him, so we're going to find him uh, a lone move, and he's already moved to Apoel Nicosia, as you can kind of see here. We have signed some real players, though. Gianluca Prestiani is one of the real players who comes in. Uh, they've signed... Uh, sorry, where's he been? Tottenham. He's been at Tottenham. They signed him from Velez. Uh, he's had a year on loan in the Championship with Blackburn Rovers. He's ready to make his Premier League debut, having not actually played that much for Spurs since, uh, since being there. We're going to really look to use him as a good player for us. Bruno Valdez is another player for us, centre back. He is five foot ten, so maybe he is a left back. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to see what the year holds for him. And then the final one is a Brian Hainan, who looks like a very, very well-rounded option. Also 31 years of age, much more of a leader, uh, which will really, really help our dynamic and our training and stuff like that. Because you need some of these players that are kind of the influential players. He's already gone in as an influential player, and he's not even played a full-time game for us um so uh, taking a look at this is really key because you don't want all your players in the other uh, other section looking at the competition so we are in three competitions this season premier league fa cup carabao cup yes scunthorpe are in the premier league ladies and gentlemen we take a look at the season preview you can see a thousand to one to win the title yes it's a lot harland is still here the media dream 11 looks disgusting can we stay in the league The cup competitions were definitely not high up on the list of priorities this season and we exit both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup early at the hands of Sunderland and West Ham respectively. This season was all about Premier League survival and we started to stock the club's coffers with that Premier League money. We started the season with four defeats in a row, conceding 14 goals and only scoring two of our own. So I knew this was going to be a very rough year. However, we did pick up some results against teams like Bournemouth and Norwich to see us continue to fight throughout the season. Our best player this season was summer signing Gianluca Prestiani, who added 12 goals and 6 assists from the right midfield position. In the second half of the season, you will see lots of red on our fixture list, but we did pick up the occasional win, even beating Arsenal 1-0 at home. We finished the season with another 5 defeats in a row, but did manage to actually achieve a mid-table finish in the Premier League, finishing 13th on a measly 37 points. It looks like the bottom of the Premier League this season was very close, with just 5 points separating 12th from 19th. Oh, and Newcastle won their first Premier League title in this save. It's not the most remarkable season, but we are still a Premier League club moving into the 2029-2030 season. That means another influx of money into the club as our overall budget sits just over £32 million. We don't have much in the way of transfer funds because we've already made some moves. So let me complete the summer transfer window and then we'll talk about them. Okay, so season seven, I hope you guys are still here. You're still going with me. We have managed to sell some players, but the first thing I need to talk to you guys about is Amani Richards has finally left the club. He's been a superb servant for us. He has now moved on. He is now a Motherwell player, uh, having really struggled a little bit last season. Only seven goals in the Premier League. It's been his lowest goal scoring return. Uh, he has finally departed the club, so massive shout out to him. We started selling people to Saudi, everyone. Andrew Bevan has departed. He has gone over to Saudi Arabia which I am more than happy with. He was on loan at Preston last season, another player that we've signed on a freebie, and now we've sold him for 7.75 million. Sometimes you need to do that. You just need to get these players out the door. Franco Souza is another player who we did bring in last season. Couldn't get him a work permit, sent him to Greece on loan, and then sold him. So sometimes some of these don't pay out. Sometimes it costs us money, just like this one. Cost us 700k. But And we sold this guy, Robert Amegia. He has gone over to Shanghai in... 
uh, China. He has played for a lot of football clubs. Uh, he has also gone for 2.8 million pounds. And Tommy Johansson is another player who we've also sold on, moved him on to West Brom. Again, in on a free, sell for 450k. Kind of balances the books a little bit, doesn't it? Um, so we kind of got some transfer business done early last season. Uh, so I need to flick over to this page to look at it. Juan Sebastian Martinez looks like a elite tier centre back. He's already been capped by Colombia. Uh, he has got 17 jumping reach, sorry, 18 jumping reach, 17 heading, and he's six foot three. So you know this guy is going to be an absolute beast. He came in uh, from Atletico Nacional for 1.4 million pounds. Janus Noor comes in from Denmark from SC Copenhagen. He looks super. Superb, absolutely superb. We spent 10 million quid on him. This guy's worth a lot more. As you can see, his value's already gone up to 30 to 34 million pounds. Uh, Pavel Kirov, another one who's come in. Creative player, can play in a number of key positions for us in central midfield and in the attacking midfield spot, but he looks very good nonetheless. Jovan Juric is another one who comes in. He comes in from Serbia as well. Nice, tricky potential winger, 17 pace, 16 acceleration. He's only got four finishing. It says he's a fullback, and I'm going to tell you now he's not. Maybe a wing back at a push, but mm, we'll see what we can do with him. Uh, and then on the last player on this page is a guy from Hamburg, a goalkeeper, uh, Lub. Bo Lubomir Belko. Looks okay. Nice, nice little improvement for us in that particular area. Now, big summer signing for us. We've actually signed this guy, Gabriel Adrizoni. He comes in having been on loan with us for the last two seasons from Sao Paulo. He's been here on loan in the championship. He's been here on loan in the Premier League. We paid nine and a half million pounds to get him to come over from Brazil and be our player full time. We also signed a fullback on the other, other side for us, uh, Jesus or Jesus Forte. Uh, he looks very good coming in from RB Leipzig as well. He cost us 14 million. This guy I'm very proud of. Looking forward to seeing how he develops over the time. Julian or Julian Cosio. Uh, he looks great. Another Colombian player. Capped at youth level. 17 finishing, 16 dribbling. Nice high agility and balance as well. Good off the ball, good technique. He's both footed. This guy's got everything. We paid £1.8 million for him. We're going to need to keep an eye on his value. We also signed Michael Catellas as well. Same club, Atletico Nacional, signing us three players from there throughout the course of the season. This guy playing behind uh, the other guy is going to be a nice partnership. 18 flair on this guy. Nice high technique, nice high first touch as well. Then we signed Daniel, another keeper. Nice to have a good couple options there. Model citizen, shot stopper, coming in from Sporting Gijon. I believe is how you say that. Uh, and then we've got this guy, the last guy. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this guy's name. He comes in from Lingby. Uh, again, good options. Lots of new gens. Lots of wonder kids etc. I will say, whilst we were going through this, I am going to quick pick the best 11 so you can kind of see some of the names and some of the positions. This is our best 11. Very new gen heavy right now. But I will say as we were going through and playing through this save, Swanzalona V2 came out. I will leave a link to both of them down in the description. GYR assures me this one is better. So hopefully it takes us to new heights. But Swanzalona V2 is what we will be running uh, now. Um, looking at the competitions though, we are Premier League yet again. FA Cup, Carabao Cup. We take on Blackburn in the second round of the Carabao Cup. With all these signings, have we got better? The answer is no. Apparently, we're still not better. We are still a 1,000 to 1 to win the division. Palace, Brentford, and Sunderland all come back up. Uh, so we're going to have to see what we can do. It's going to be a very big season. I want to remain in the Premier League yet again. Yet again, we had another poor showing in the domestic cup competitions. This season, we beat Blackburn in the second round of the EFL Cup, but then got dumped out of the competition by League One Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough, which at this stage of the save is actually a massive, massive upset. And in the FA Cup, we went out at the first time of asking, having shared a draw with Leicester in the first game at home, we then lost in extra time in the replay with Bubakari Samore scoring the all-important goal. That did allow us to focus exclusively on the Premier League, and that definitely paid off. We started the season with four wins on the spin, but had spells in the season where we put together a series of good results against teams that I feel that we could compete against. But we're just not at the level of some of the league's big hitters just yet. This season was a huge breakout year for summer signing Julian Cosio, as he was our top goal scorer in the Premier League, bagging 13 goals from 36 games. 
Don't forget that we signed him for £1.8 million in the summer and he's now valued at 39 to £49 million and is primed to become a fully-fledged Colombian international. Moving into 2030, we were either winning games or we were losing games. There wasn't really anything in between. But we did pick up some impressive results, even beating Arsenal and Manchester United at Glanford Park and against Spurs on the road. Because of the increase in wins, we actually finished the season in 7th and saw ourselves qualify for the Europa Conference League thanks to those coefficient spaces. Scunthorpe in Europe. Who'd have thought it? I was beyond ecstatic with this season and so were the board as they thought they'd cash in by expanding the stadium. But sadly, this will only increase the capacity by 4,050 and in the meantime, we will be sharing a stadium with Hull City, which is over 30 miles away. But after our second full season in the Premier League, the big money has landed in our account as we have a transfer budget of just shy of £65 million. So let's get to spending. You can tell that we've been a Premier League club for a little bit of time now because you can see there is a ludicrous amount of transfer activity going on. £35.5 million in player outage, uh, which is really cool. Lots of loan fees as well, which is really nice to see. Uh, Francisco Ortega is one of the ones gone to AEK for £13.5 million. Uh, Parker, Parker Deze is the guy who we signed on a free from Bayern Munich a couple seasons ago. He's gone for £13 million to Tenerife. You can kind of see what we've been aiming to do here and we're finally seeing the fruits of that labor Joaquin uh, Pombo Pombo uh, is another one who's gone out there um, and you can see all the loan fees as well it's really really good work now on the incoming side of things we've been using that wonder kid finder yet again and we have been active in the transfer market we've got to start on this page because I hate that football manager doesn't do this but in total we brought in 15 players for just under 70 million pounds uh, starting with this guy D'Angelino Pietro D'Angelino Angelino, he looks very good. Can play in three key positions for us. Four if you count central midfield. I love that he can play as a striker and he can also play in centre mid, but can't play as a cam. That makes no sense to me. Uh, we also signed Vlasic uh, from Serbia. He looks supremely well-rounded, very creative as well. 17 passing, high technique, good teamwork, vision, etc. Along with his decision-making, could be a good option for us. Uh, Brian Hurtado looks very good. Mexican youth international, supremely, supremely well-rounded. Came in from Club Leon for £7.5 million. Ready for him to make his Premier League debut. Marcos Diaz, another one coming in. This one from Penarol in Uruguay. You can kind of see again, £2.2 .2 million for him there. There. Looks like a good pickup for us. And then finally, Luis Fabiano, another striker Brazilian coming in from Atletico Mineral. He's not really good enough to play yet, uh, so we will try and loan him out. But sometimes you need to take the fees when they are available on these players. And then lots of players on this list as well. Uh, we've been very active, as you can see. Gabriel Ortega, another one coming in. Maripan, another one who looks very good. Uh, a nice, well-rounded central midfielder. Kleiman, free transfer. Young English player worth a punt on, maybe. Harris Mustafic, again, another Bosnian youth, uh, sorry, Bosnian fully fledged international, age 21. Coming in from Norseland, looks like a very good defender for us there. Uh, Jeremy Yakwet is how I'm going to butcher this poor French man's name. He looks superb, actually, as a centre back. Six foot two, big physical specimen. Looking forward to seeing what he can do and disrupt defences in the Premier League. Abdul Antwi, another one coming in. This guy came in from Bournemouth. Uh, we've not really broken the bank on loads of these signings, just loads of little ones just to keep topping us up and ultimately probably to sell on for bigger fees in the future. Nuno Colijo looks like another good option for us in central midfield. Felipe Rosara, again, winger, high pace, coming in from a club in Chile, 2.2 million pounds. Uh, 1.1 million pounds on this guy from Vojvodina. Darko Nikesic is how I'm going to butcher this guy's name. Looks like a supremely well-rounded player. Again, 20 determination. Valued at 54 to 59 million pounds. High pace. Yes, these are the types of players we do like to see. And then the last one, Mustafa Khalid. Is, a, uh, is that Egyptian? Oh, my God. This is really testing me. Yeah, Egyptian uh, defender. Good, good players. Lots of good players here. Lots of players. Lots of turnover, though. So that's going to be the main thing. We are a very, very young squad. If we quick pick without restriction our best 11, this is how we are set up. Cusio is our main man. Prestiani still here. We've got really, really good depth and lots of good players in the team, but no real standouts. Jacquette comes in for Tia. They are good players, but they're not like 
Unreal standout players. So it's going to be really interesting to see. We are young though, guys. We are a young squad. If we go and take a look at the comparison and see how you compare to the league if you go into the squad planner into the report and then into the comparison you can see we are the youngest team in the league by quite some considerable margin 21.72 years of age is the average age of our squad and the average for the premier league is 26 so we are quite considerably younger than everybody else so hopefully obviously you can see we are paying everyone a lot less than the average um so hopefully these young players can stay with us and turn us into an absolute powerhouse competitions wise of course we have the same stuff yet again um where the coefficient played around uh, we were no longer sadly in the europa conference league so that's probably a good thing for us so we're going to be in the premier league plymouth argyle are up here with us now it's it's a crazy time to be an fm let's wrap up this season and see how we get on In the EFL Cup, we progressed through the third and fourth rounds with victories against Gillingham and Brighton before facing Burnley in the quarterfinals. This game was pretty one-sided and we managed to knock out Burnley with relative ease with a 3-0 win with Brian Hurtado scoring the pick of the goals. That result set up a two-legged semi-final against Southampton and we were at home for the first leg and the boys had a little bit of an off day here as the Saints rattled in three goals before Prestiani added a consolation from the spot in injury time. Meaning we'd have a lot to do at St Mary's to overcome the deficit and it wasn't to be as Southampton added another two goals to win the tie 5-1 on aggregate. However, this was actually our best performance in this competition for a long, long time. The FA Cup was a relative success for us as well as we beat Notts County, Plymouth and Leicester City to reach the quarterfinal stage. Here we faced Manchester United at home and despite dominating the game in terms of the stats, United scored their only two shots on target and won the game 2-0. In the Premier League, we had a ropey start as several of the new players were still settling in at the club and also not playing at Glanford Park was a huge loss for us this season. Julian Cosio had another fine year, improving his goal output to register 21 goals in 36 Premier League games this season, and he is now wanted by Wolfsburg in Germany. Cosio actually did finish as the runner-up to Haaland in the Golden Boot race, so you can see the kind of calibre player he is. In the new year, we finally figured things out, putting together a much more impressive run in the second half, which saw us finish with a seven-game unbeaten run. That saw us actually finish seventh in the lead table for a second season in a row, and we would actually qualify for Europe next season. But this was by far our best season so far, and I'll be looking to push up the table next year. However, the money has disappeared for us this season, so we're going to have to make some money if we want to spend some money, but our squad is bursting at the seams right now with 37 players in our first team squad i said that we had lots of players in our squad and we've kind of gone through them and shifted a decent number of them out 56 million pounds of players uh, being moved out of the club as you can see some of them on bigger loan fees we're actually getting 2.3 million pounds for one of them uh, mustafa khalid uh, but prestiani is the biggest outgoing he was wanted by saudi arabia he has gone to al ali it's a nice move for him age 25 he's on an absolute wedge isn't he yeah 325k a week 18.25 million pounds for us uh, lubomir belko a uh, goalkeeper who we did sign uh, a couple seasons back he has gone over to lazio for 14 million jovan juric another player the high pace uh serbian that we said is not a fullback i still don't know what he is but we've sold him as well he has departed for 11.25 million and then on terms of some of the incomings we've got a couple of these players there's a few on this page as well another uruguayan coming in from nacional this time another midfielder yes we can just find so many of these youth players it's absolutely crazy 5.5 million for him amir sehich comes in from spurs as well a nice brilliant player really really high quality players that we are pulling in now he's actually got the wonder kid tag as well he cost us an absolute bomb 32 million pounds 18 balance for him good composure good determination 18 positioning on a 20 year old is next level mentally this guy is he is that guy six foot two as well which really really does help 32 and a half million for him sign this guy from lazio cosman uh he again looks very good valued at 60 million to 75 million pounds now uh former cfr Cluj player uh, again looks very good four goals for his national side as well and then 53 million pounds worth of players on here the first two coming in from andalek aldri Krupa is how i'm going to butcher this guy's name 17 off the ball for him along with good physical attributes tries first time shots as well another wonder kid off of the 
filter. Yes, I'm going to keep banging that drum, guys. Romeo Sagers is another one who comes in on the left-hand side. Looks very good. Runs down the ball. Uh, runs down the left with the ball. Tries killer balls often. Curls the ball. Six foot. Good work rate. Good technique. We like these kinds of, kind, kinds of players, guys. He came in for 12.5 million. Uh, Pedro Gomez. Uh, a young Portuguese international goalkeeper. Looks very good coming in from AC Milan, having moved already from Portugal. Oops, there we go. I've clicked too many buttons there. Milan paid £2.6 million pounds for him. Hasn't really played in Serie A. We paid £10 million pounds for him. Could be a good number one for us, along with this guy, Dominic Haasenei. Uh, from Puskas Academia. We're going to have a good battle for the boys to see who actually plays in goal. Uh, but we did sign uh, Stankov Philip Stankovic uh, last season, uh, in the middle of the season, actually, to potentially be our new goalkeeper. But we've got lots of, lots of options now. And if we quick pick without restriction, our best 11, this is how we're looking. We're really starting to tick up the level of ability now. We've got three and a half star players littered throughout the team, one at the back, and then four, uh, sorry, three out of the four up front in D'Angelino, Tellez, and Cozio. Uh, uh, so we have really, really good options this season. And I'm expecting big things as we go into the Europa League. Yes, Europa League, we are here. It's going to be a ludicrous one. I'm really intrigued to see how we do get on in the Europa League because as an English club, we should have a bit of an advantage. I'd also like to do well in these cup competitions, but the board are again expecting us to fight against relegation from the Premier League. If we have a look at the season preview though, we are slowly starting to move up this one now. We are above the three newly promoted teams, Burnley, Leicester and Southampton. Uh, and Laminia Mal has also transferred to the division here. He's at Man City. I had not seen that until now. 104, 182 million, sorry, for Laminia Mal from Barcelona. He looks very good. Yay! Let's get into the season. This season, we actually reverted to type by being awful yet again in these cup competitions. In the EFL Cup, we crashed out to Manchester United at home, losing the game 3-1. And things didn't get much better in the FA Cup as we managed to limp past Swindon Town in the third round before getting battered by Nottingham Forest at home again in the fourth round. However, the club did make its European debut in the Europa League. We entered in the league phase and took to the competition like a duck to water, winning six of our eight matches to finish second in the table on 29 points and automatically qualify for the round of 16. Here we face PSV from Holland, a side that we actually did beat in the league phase. The first game of the tie was on the road and to my surprise, we absolutely routed the former Champions League winners, opening up a 5-0 lead to take into the second leg. Things didn't get much better for the Dutch side here as we continue to look impressive and put the tie to bed, progressing with a 9-2 aggregate win. So we moved into the quarterfinals where we faced Real Sociedad and this time we'd be at home in the first leg. We took the lead early from the spot and Tellers added a second in the second half, but Sociedad legend Mikel Olazabal wasn't having any of it, scoring twice in two minutes to make the game all square. However, the boys seemingly loved playing in the sunshine of Spain as we raced into a 3-0 lead in the second leg before Sociedad pulled one back. To make things safe, Tellers added a final goal in injury time to see us move into the semi-finals with a 6-3 aggregate win. Here we'd face Spanish opposition yet again in the form of Granada with Glanford Park hosting the first leg. In this one, we were almost instantly reduced to 10 men as D'Angelo was given his marching orders on the 10th minute. However, that seemingly galvanized the team as we somehow went on a second half goal scoring rampage with the tie ending 5-2 to us, which is just as well because the game in Spain was much harder. This time, it was Granada who came to play and dominated the game early, even taking the lead in the tie. But in the second half, we added two goals to see us snatch a 7-6 aggregate lead and progress into the final. Here we take on Italian side Sassuolo and we really dominated the game from start to finish. Julian Cosio opened the scoring for us, capitalizing on a defensive mix-up before defender Jesus Fortera made it two just after half time. We continue to dominate the game and Cosio added her second for himself just after the hour mark tapping home from close range. So in nine seasons, we've managed to take Scunthorpe United from the sixth tier of English football and turn them into a European champion. But unfortunately, that European success did cost us in the Premier League. This season, we had a little bit of a regression year due to appearances in the Europa League, which is pretty understandable with our young squad. 
We find wins hard to come by this season, getting seemingly unlucky with the fixture list, getting clusters of difficult games one after another. However, we did manage to win 15 games this season, so weren't in any danger of relegation, but we did finish down in 11th with a massively negative goal difference. However, because of our Europa League win, we will be participating in the Champions League in our 10th and final season. We have another £50 million to spend on players over the summer, but I think this squad is already capable of achieving bigger things. And some other amazing news, the club has decided that a new stadium is required, so we will be looking for a site to build a brand new 39,000 seater stadium. Okay guys, so we're going into our 10th and final season, and if you are still here watching this video, I really do want to say thank you. I know this is going to be over an hour, I feel so sorry for my editor, but you guys watching this are the reason I'm doing this. And this is our biggest summer transfer window to date. As you can see, £82 million we managed to recoup on lots of players. Uh, Janos Noor has departed for Al Ali, he's gone over to Saudi Arabia. Pedro Gomez has joined them as well, as has Maripan, you can see the big money moving. Filip Stankovic has moved to Aston Villa along with lots of these other players that we've been managing to get into the club. And we've spent big guys to try and make this last season really, really count. Again, we've raided Atletico Nacional over in Colombia for another youth prospect of theirs. Uh, they just seem to generate such unreal players. We also signed Kemi Johannes as well, a Dutch international. He looks great as well. He comes in from Sparta Rotterdam. Uh, we paid £18 million for him. Uh, he was on the slightly more cheaper side. Manu Kone, yes, we've signed some real players. Manu Kone has come into the club as well. He's 31 years of age now. He's never actually been capped by France. He's been at Gladbach this whole time and we pay £40 million for him. He's been a stalwart for them over in the Bundesliga. So we're going to have to see how he develops. Luke Portelli is one of the gems that we've picked up from Tottenham. He looks great. 19 flair, high technique, high vision. He's going to be able to unlock defences. Not really played a tool for Tottenham. 13.25 million pounds we paid for him. Elia Harrison, another real player coming in from Manchester United. Good goalkeeper for us. He's going to go in to take our number one spot. Good one-on-ones, good kicking as well on him. Nice natural fitness and agility and pace and stuff like that. Mikel Uranga uh, looks like a good player for us. High, high potential centre-back as well. Uh, six foot three, nice jumping reach, good natural fitness, good concentration and bravery. So, so important, the concentration for a good centre-back. He's got one cap for Spain, so you know how good he is already. Illich we signed from uh, uh, Red Bull Sol sorry, Red Bull Leipzig, sorry, um, as another good player for us. 80 caps this man's got for Serbia. This is why, 80 caps. We needed a little bit more steel, a little bit more grit, a little bit more players who have been there and kind of done stuff, and he, alongside Manu Kone, is definitely going to add that. Juan Carlos Caner, uh, Quinones is how I'm going to uh, absolutely annihilate this poor man's name. Again, you can kind of see what we've been doing this whole save, guys, and you can see how we We've got uh, the club in this position because 31 million in the club bank balance. Uh, we've got a big debt, but it's because of the bloody stadium that they're trying to build. So that wasn't my decision. Competitions wise, we've got lots this season. Um, obviously, we're in the Champions League for the first time ever. We also have the UEFA Super Cup as last season's uh, Europa League winners, where we will take on PSG. Yes, PSG have won the Champions League three times. Three, as many as three. 2027, 2030, 2032. PSG doing mad things. I'm sure they've but he's still got Mbappe, so this, this is going to be fun. Uh, and in the Premier League, though, we are slowly making improvements. If we look at the season preview, we're now predicted to finish in 12th. Yes, we've actually made big strides up the league. We're now 200 to 1 to win the title. We're still a long shot away, um, so it's going to be interesting to see if we can actually get it done in this 10th and final season. We open the season with the UEFA Super Cup by taking on PSG as last season's Europa League winners. Jamal Musiala opened the scoring for the French side, but Julian Cosio was on hand to pull us level with a goal minutes later. The game then actually did go into extra time, where Kylian Mbappe struck in the 94th minute to ultimately win the game for PSG. But I did think, as a club the size of Scunthorpe, we actually did pretty well here. In the EFL Cup this season, we managed a deep run thanks to some impressive performances in the early rounds. We moved past Stockport and Barrow with ease before battering Arsenal 5-0 in the quarterfinal. 
This set up a two-legged semi-final against Leeds United, which we opened the away leg with a brace from Kemi Johannes to secure a two-goal lead to take back home. At Glanford Park, we added a third to put the tie to bed to move into the final where we would take on Chelsea. Now, Chelsea are a very different team 10 seasons into the game and showed their class by ripping us apart in the tie, scoring four goals of their own before we scored twice in the 90th minutes to see the disappointing end to a very good cup run. It seems like this was a season for cup progress as we made our way through the rounds of the FA Cup as well. We first knocked out Warsaw before Norwich, Nottingham Forest and Burnley all suffered the same fate. The draw gods were kind to us in the semi-finals as we took on my team Bristol City who are now sadly down in Skybet League 1. As you'd expect the League 1 side stood no chance as we coasted into the final with Julian Cosio scoring an impressive hat-trick. It was West Ham in the final and it seemed like the outfield players had a little bit of stage fright again as the Hammers scored twice inside the first 10 minutes to shell shock us. Unfortunately, we couldn't recover and West Ham won the FA Cup and we took our third runners-up medal of the season. As you'd expect with a younger squad like this, we struggled for consistency in the Premier League, picking up some impressive wins against the likes of Man City and Newcastle, but ultimately losing too many games throughout the season. We finished the season in eight, so that would mean European football again next season, but we're nowhere near the top of the table, finishing a whopping 30 points behind Manchester City. And finally, we started our debut Champions League season well, going unbeaten for our first five games of the league phase before suffering three defeats in a row to finish 23rd in the table and narrowly qualify for the knockout portion of the competition. In the playoff round, we faced Benfica, who we'd entertain at Glanford Park in the first leg. Despite being in the game for large spells, Benfica showed what a talented side they can be by winning the game 3-0 with all the goals coming in the second half. Sadly for us, things didn't get much better in Lisbon as Orkin Kokchu scored a superb hat-trick in a 5-1 demolition with Luke Portelli scoring the consolation goal for us. So we had three runners-up medals this season and a knockout appearance in the Champions League. But as you can see, Scunthorpe are now a fully-fledged Premier League club. They've done superb and if we look at the club info you can see that we've done the work improving the facilities before and after in this time that we've spent at the club they've done superbly well we not are no longer affiliated with anybody but we are looking to move into the new 40,000 capacity seater stadium in Scunthorpe the Scunthorpe stadium in 2036 which is actually three years ahead of where we are right now but at least the club's got some plans and maybe if we keep doing well they might add some stuff to it but ultimately the history and the overview of this save has been absolutely remarkable one two three four five promotions and then steady sailing in the premier league we've won a europa league it's been absolutely crazy if we look at some of our best players luke portelli who came in this summer now he's actually got some game time he has been fantastic Mikel tellez again some of these players all these new gens look absolutely brilliant uh, and where is our striker supreme i'm trying to find him this guy he's rated as a three-star player he just scores goals, man. 25 goals for him. Absolutely smashing it. Our man Cosio, absolute legend of the game. If you want to carry on this save, you can do. The save files are over on my Patreon. And guys, don't forget to go and check out Sneak. Their link, or my link for them, is in the description. Gets you 10% off of every single order that you do with them.